All right, gentlemen, thank you very much for being on here. Welcome to APEX webinar 004. Um, super humbled, super vigilant, um, and honored to have Coach Wojcik from Notre Dame, Coach Brundage from Hobart, and Chris Aslanian from Princeton University. Um, I'm going to let all the coaches introduce themselves now and do self intros. Start with you, Coach Wojcik. Okay, hey, hello, everyone. Uh, Coach Whitlow, thanks so much for having me on. And, uh, you know, just a little background about myself. Grew up in Westfield, New Jersey. I've been coaching college across for, for 20 years now. I'm currently an assistant coach uh, out in Notre Dame in South Bend, Indiana. How's everybody doing? Uh, this, my name is Stephen Brundage. Uh, I'm assistant coach for Hobart College here in upstate New York. Uh, I grew up in upstate New York and Syracuse. I've been coaching for about 15 years now. Uh, most recently, I was out at Marquette in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I moved out there to help start the program. And uh, just this past year, moved moved uh, closer to home here in Geneva to be with uh, the Hobart States. And so appreciate you having me on, MV. How's it going, everybody? My name is Chris Aslanian. I played my college across at Hobart and graduated this past May. I currently play for the Denver Outlaws, and I'm an assistant coach at Princeton University. I also grew up in Westfield, New Jersey, and grew up going to Coach Wojcik's camp, so really excited to be here, and uh, thanks for having me, Coach Wojcik. Great. Thanks, guys. Um, you know, Coach Wojcik, Coach Brundage, Coach Aslanian, very Honored to be on here with you and super grateful. Um, unique times that we're in right now. Um, and what we found in doing these is that, you know, it really does give some perspective to families, student athletes, parents, um, and it's been helpful. Um, you know, anytime we can lend a hand in, in adverse times, obviously we're going to as leaders. Um, you know, the first section we're going to cover is, is exactly that, just sharing perspectives um, from each coach to need school. Um, and, uh, you know, from there, we'll move into the second section of, of being a little bit more specific. But gentlemen, again, thank you so much for being on here. Really looking forward to uh, your perspectives. And uh, Coach, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. Well, just to just really to start off on just overall perspectives, my wife and I, we have four young children, you know, all under the age of eight. So, um, you know, we are our first priority, as always, particularly in these times is the security and the, and the health of, you know, our, our children. So we've also transitioned to, you know, my oldest son, you know, you learning in school each day, uh, two little girls who are, uh, you know, doing some ABC mouse on the computer. So our days are mostly right now uh, about, you know, homeschooling and, and e-learning with our children. And my wife also continues to work. She's a nurse practitioner. So, um, you know, in, 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 in addition, I have, a, you know, a brother and, and who's got a family and a father who's in New Jersey now. So we're really concerned, obviously, about them, you know, how uh, everything's affecting that area right now. So, you know, first and foremost, the most important thing is just urging everyone to, to social distance. Uh, and to be responsible and to and really to play your part, you know, in this global health crisis, you know, that that we're, you know, we're all going through right now. And, you know, one of the values of, you know, any team that I've ever been a part of is, is being a great teammate. And, you know, that can mean a lot of different things. Right now, what that means is, you know, we're, we're teammates with everyone on this planet, and particularly the 330 million people across our country. Um, so, you know, to, to everyone out there, again, just kind of urging to, to, to social distance, to be smart, uh, and to be responsible, you know, really during uh, these times. And I think that this sacrifice that's being asked of us, it's a modest one, um, you know, to, to stay inside and, and to be really smart. Um, you know, and I think about, you know, the doctors and the nurses right now, what they're doing, uh, our armed forces, what they do every day, uh, you know, our first responders, fire police, EMS, um, it really pales, you know, what we're being asked to do is pales in comparison what, you know, those people do every single day. So I think that's the most important thing, um, you know, right now for, for, for all of us. Um, I know we're all, you know, in a profession, you know, where we coach and we educate young men. And, you know, in our program right now at Notre Dame, really our program, you know, our actions are, it, it, it's the same. You know, our first 
priority and most important priority right now is the health and safety of our players, um, you know, our commits and, and their families. So, you know, each week we're in communication with, you know, our players, um, how are they doing, how are their families doing, you know, that's really where it, where it starts. Now, kind of moving into as we adjust to uh, e-learning, um, you know, in this unprecedented time here, um, just talking to our players really each week about that structure and how that's going. Um, you know, they're used to a, a pretty consistent, similar structure when they're on campus. You know, now that they're home, you know, some classes are, are Zoom conference call classes where they have to be, you know, certain time and place uh, that class starts. Others are, you know, online lectures, which they can come back and, and complete at any point. But, um, you know, I think just encouraging them to make sure that they're consistent in structuring uh, their day, you know, how they're going to attack their classes, um, you know, in their school and, and just being, you know, being there for, for them. Um, you know, in terms of really our program messaging right now, it's really, you know, exactly the same. You know, in addition to our current players, we have communicated with our seniors that are coming next year and then our junior, the junior commits. Um, you know, we've been in touch and contact, um, you know, with them. Um, you know, after that, you know, we, you know, recruiting is really um, in a holding pattern uh, for us. You know, what do I say to, to, you know, the young men out there and the parents is, you know, don't, don't worry about recruiting contact uh, or evaluation uh, right now. Um, you know, if we receive an email from a junior, you know, we're going to respond with that message that, you know, we, we hope that right now, most, most importantly, your focus is on the, the health and the safety of your family. Second, you know, being, um, you know, conscientious and diligent with your academics. Uh, and then finally, you know, a, a self-improvement uh, plan or program that, you know, I know we're, that we're going to talk about later in this webinar. Well put, Coach Wojcik. Um, thank you very much for that perspective. Coach uh, Brun, did you have the floor, sir? Thanks there, Coach. Uh, you know, I think, you know, in just terms of understanding this whole situation, I think that's uh, what we've all been doing and kind of going through the stages of that um, and the range of emotions that come with it. You know, I think just thinking back to kind of how it all went down for us. You know, that week we're preparing to go to Robert Morris and, uh, you know, news is just coming by, by the hour and by the minute of, of programs, you know, ending their season or postponing. And we've got players coming into our office asking questions and we're just telling them to focus on Robert Morris and we don't have any answers, uh, you know, to the next day our season being canceled. How rapidly this all changed for all of us and just trying to understand it all, I think, is what was, was the first part. And, and just like Coach Woj mentioned, um, just making sure we're all safe, you know, making sure our guys got home safely and, uh, and just being in contact with them, being in contact with our own families. Um, you know, we got a couple of guys on our team that, that live in Harlem, and obviously that's the epicenter of what's going on in our country. So just being concerned with them and just making sure we're, we've been reaching out. Um, and so I think – I think kind of just understanding what's going on and assessing that and making sure everybody's good is, has been uh, the focus of our staff here at Hobart. Um, and then, you know, just, just feeling sorry for ourselves, honestly. And just when you have a second to kind of step back and just realize what had happened and understanding that this season is gone and how excited we were about uh, what we had here at Hobart and what we were doing, it was just, uh, you know, it was a real bummer to just try to digest that information um, but after you do that and after you spend a couple of days of kind of feeling sorry for yourself, then it's okay. What's the next step here? And I think pretty much every, every staff and every team is, is, is going to go about things the same way. And that is trying to keep our, our routines really. I mean, we, we are creatures of habit and structure. And, um, I think that's, that's going to be probably most messages. And that's certainly ours here at Hobart. You know, we talk all the time to our guys about, you're not a product of your circumstance, you're a product of your decision-making. And, and so of course we've got to respond to this and how do we do that? We, we, we got to continue to do the things that we were doing if we were all here together. Um, of course, it's going to look different. 
it's going to feel a little different, but, um, you know, us as a staff, we've, we've got to continue to try to structure our days the same. Um, and, and our players do too. So I think that's one thing that, that we've been stressing to them from, from day one is we've, we've all gotten into our new uh, day-to-day lives here at home is let's keep that routine. You know, our, our guys provide us a weekly schedule of what they're doing, a daily schedule of what they're doing, um, how they're going to go about this remote learning and making sure they got time for their workouts and when they're, you know, budgeting times just to, to just be with family, obviously. So, um, but, you know, listen, it, it, as the season goes on, it's a journey and you have, you have bumps in the road and you meet an opponent and, and you have certain adversity. And, and, and really that was our first message to the team is this is just, this is just a part of our journey right now with this team this year. We ran, we ran into an opponent um, that nobody saw coming and how are we going to react to that? And knowing that, you know, <clears throat> adversity is usually the best agent for growth. And so how can we respond to this whole thing? How can we stay on track? How can we keep the ax sharp, uh, keep the sticks in our hands, work out, and do our best with, with uh, what, what we've got in front of us? So um, I, think, uh, I think that's going to continue to be our message here as time goes on. Thanks, Coach Brundage. Honest uh, assessment of, of the journey. Much appreciated. Um, Coach A, I'm going to shift to you. You have the floor, sir. Great, thanks. Yeah, um, you know, just talking about from a, a program perspective at Princeton, we're, we're doing more of the same things. We're, you know, trying to stay in touch with our guys through Zoom as much as possible. Um, they have their online classes, so, you know, they're really focused in on those, and they've been in constant communication with our strength conditioning coach as to, you know, what they can do at home and um, what they can control at this time. And, you know, our coaches right now are working extremely hard to, to find answers for these guys about eligibility and whatnot, but until then, you know, we're just trying to stay in a routine that, you know, we normally would have at school. Um, and, you know, kind of like Coach Brundage said, this was, you know, obviously a very tough time. Um, it was great for me to come in as, you know, a, a first year, uh, first year coach and see things from a different perspective. Um, you know, I played, I played attack at Hobart my career. So I was on the offensive side of the ball, but my responsibilities at Princeton were to coach the goalies and, um, you know, it was a position that I was unfamiliar with. Um, but thankfully I had Coach Malon, who, you know, is a great goalie in himself and, I learned a ton from from all the other coaches. I was also able to coach my uh, former high school teammate, John Levine, uh, who's a senior captain for us and did such a great job day in and day out of practice. And, you know, just to kind of refer back to my former head coach, Coach Raymond at Hobart, he was on the, the first webinar uh, with Blue Star here, and he talked about being a good teammate and being a selfless competitor um, and, you know, showing up and competing to a level where, day in and day out, you're going to make the team better and others around you. And I thought that's something that John really did well with this goalie core. And, you know, it was awesome to see every single day those guys come in and, and push one another. Um, and it, it wasn't, you know, just limited to that group. It was, you know, Michael Sowers leading the offense uh, on the other end. You know, he's a guy who you see a ton, um, you know, on social media and all the highlights. But, you know, what a lot of people don't see is his consistent work ethic day in and day out. Um, and, you know, that, that really trickled down throughout our entire team. Um, we had, you know, guys who were selfless enough to, you know, switch over from offensive midi to defensive midi and, you know, kind of take that role. And I feel like that's why we had a ton of success this year. Um, everybody was, was bought in top to bottom. And I think one of the coolest moments for me, just being a young coach, was getting a win and coming back from Virginia on the road and, seeing the guys who were unable to travel, you know, greet all the guys in the team who were, who were super excited. And I think, you know, that's the real mark of a great team. So, you know, it was devastating, obviously, to have the season ended, but we're trying to take all the proper precautions and, and stay as safe, as safe as possible here. Thanks, Coach. Um, really, really well said. Um, moving on into the second section of this thing, um, you know, the advice that has been given on these previous segments has been really useful, great feedback from families and players, specifically about, you know, not just 
what has been given to them as far as, you know, mature perspectives about what to do, but also, you know, the language that's been used and the, the level of leadership that's been shown by the coaches that have been on here, where you're combining, you know, a balance of courageous leadership, but at the same time, vigilant caution, um, you know, and striking that balance, you know, right down the middle with, with a lot of compassion layered in is, is good messaging. Um, and it's certainly good action. Um, and so we appreciate your perspectives a great deal. Um, so moving into the second part of this with specific advice to student athletes and families about how to handle this time. Um, looking forward to uh, all the specifics there. And Coach Brundage, if you'd please lead us off. Thank you. Yeah, um, you know, just uh, again, I think it's going to be a similar thread to a few of the points I just made. Um, you know, our communication specifically to our seniors and our committed juniors has been pretty similar that, it, uh, you know, with, with our communication to our current team right now. And that's just trying to create a little bit of normalcy in this crazy, unique period. Um, and we do that by trying to stick to a routine, routine as best as possible. Um, you know, and I, what I'll say to, to kids out there right now that, that it's crushing that they don't have their seasons going on and we're all kind of wondering what's going to be happening this summer. To, to that, I will say, you know, don't overcomplicate this. We, we tell our guys all the time, do not overcomplicate this game. At the end of the day, um, this game comes down to putting the stick in your hands consistently and being and having the best stick skills. It's, it's amazing. I think kids will be surprised if they were to walk onto a college campus and, and be at a college practice, how fundamental we go about things at all programs. I bet you all coaches will agree the, the attention to fundamentals um, is, is at the utmost importance for all of us. We do the most basic stick work drills constantly. Um, and that's because we just believe that having sharp stick, stick skills is what matters. Um, it takes all the thinking out of lacrosse if you can just feel good about your stick and not have to think about catching and passing. Um, so what I'll urge to all you guys, whether you're an offensive player, a defenseman, even a goalie, is put the stick in your hands. And this is a time now when you don't need much. Maybe you have a brother or a sister. Maybe you have a wall or at least a net or something. Um, and, and, and to perfect your craft. And, and I think that is your best marketing right now, honestly. You know, you're, you're nervous right now as a family wondering, oh, if we can't get to the, some of these events, how am I going to be seen? Well, you know, at the end of the day, talent speaks for itself. And so get on that wall and perfect your craft. And then they'll, you know, listen, we're all in the same playing field. So nobody's getting seen right now. So what can you do behind the scenes um, and that's, that's my message to you. You know, 20 years ago, there wasn't recruiting events. There wasn't a club circuit. When I was getting recruited, there wasn't any of that. And we still made it to college. So uh, all I did was get on the wall. And I, and, and I honestly think it's as simple as that. You know, when, when you get to the next level, you know, the other thing I'll say to you young guys and girls is the players at this level that separate themselves are the ones that find the ability to work when they're not with us. You know, and of course, there's that, there's that three hour time when we're practicing, but, but the guys at this level that really separate themselves are the ones that figure out how to work and to put that extra time in. And so you've got the time right now. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Get on the wall and perfect your craft and be a student of the game. You know, watch lacrosse. We're all, you know, you go on Twitter right now and you see everybody watching you know, the 2004 national championship or the 1998 national championship. I've been doing the same and it's been great to go back and watch some of this lacrosse. And for me, to, I'm constantly as a coach picking ideas up, you know, right. I'm literally stopping the, the, the 1998 national championship and I'm, I'm writing the Princeton offense down. So it, it's, you know, I think it's incumbent upon you guys to try to be a student of the game as much as you can. You know, we want players when they get to us at this level to be consistent, we want to be able to trust them. And, and we're, you gain that trust, I think, through your stick skills and being consistent in practice day in and day out. Um, and somebody who knows the game, honestly, it's, it's amazing how simple this can be at this level if you can provide consistency through your stick and through your knowledge of the sport. So 
I would say dive in, be a student in the game, try to learn, try to teach yourself how to watch film. There's so much access online this day and age. Um, and do your best to take advantage of that. Really good advice, Coach. Awesome. Thank you. Um, really like the the personal touch when you get on here and you hear the individual coaches talk, um, you know, and they have their own style, but they also have genuine material and it comes through that way. Um, so thanks, Coach Brundage. Coach Aslani, you have the floor. Yeah, uh, that's all great advice and really hard to follow up. I'll be sure to uh, to definitely check out some Hobart games and of all those guys I used to play with. I um, was really impressed with what you guys did this year, Coach Brundage. Um, but, yeah, just going off that, I think – I think all the stuff, the stuff that Coach Brundage, um, you know, hit on is, is spot on. Now you have, you know, time to get the stick in your hands. You have a ton of time to go watch film. And, you know, when he's talked about learning how to watch film, you know, it's you can go and watch your favorite player, but, you know, break down how he moves off ball. You know, how, how's his footwork when he's doing this? You know, where are his hands when he's shooting? I think all those little things are really, you know, really great and stuff that's helped me get better by, by watching others and then going out in the backyard and trying to emulate it. Um, and you know, another piece of advice I'd say right now with a ton of free time on your hand is, is just to have fun, you know, go out and try new things, um, you know, and just have fun with, with a stick in your hands. I think everybody can, you know, relate back to a time where they fell in love with this game, just picking up a stick, playing in their backyard. So, you know, I think, you know, with all this time we have now, you really can, you know, focus on that stuff individually where, you know, normally if you were in practice with your team, you know, a lot of drills would be team oriented and you'd be preparing for an opponent. But, you know, now you can kind of take that time to take a step back and, you know, just really improve your game and, and be a student of the game. Thanks, Coach A. Um, well put. The balance between structure and, um, and fun was something I was going to touch on at the end of this for sure. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, Coach Woj, you gonna bring this thing home? Uh, great points from uh, you know Coach Brundage, Coach Aslani, and thank you very much, you know, for sharing. I think you know when I when I look at self improvement, and this really applies to you know anything in life, and um, you know advice I would give you know young people, you know, is is whatever you're doing, you know, ask yourself why. You know, why am I doing this? Why, you know, why do I play lacrosse? You know, why do I commit, you know, at the college level, 30 hours a week um, to something, you know, at the high school level, maybe a little bit, you know, less, um, you know, in particular at this time right now, you know, with self-improvement, you know, you know, why am I doing this workout? You know, so certainly some, you know, just think about the intentionality of, you know, what am I doing here? Why am I doing it? You know, so it is, you know, so it is, uh, productive. Um, you know, for high school and youth players, you know, I'm not, you know, I've been a college coach um, and I'd probably 95% of my time the last 20 years has been dedicated to college level athletes. So I'm certainly not an expert in practice you know, in terms of guidance for high school players, the youth players, you know, Coach Whitlow's you know, outstanding high school career would have much better, you know, ha excuse me, high school coaching career, much better advice really from me. But there are principles, you know, that I've, that I've, bought into and followed throughout, you know, my playing career and my coaching career that I do think are applicable to any age when you, when you look at self-improvement. You know, John Wooden, the legendary basketball coach, you know, someone who's been a guiding light in my coaching uh, career and, um, you know, modeled a number of things that I believe in, um, you know, around, you know, his principles. He had a great saying, uh, a concept that don't ever confuse activity with productivity. And what that means is just because I'm doing something, that doesn't mean I'm, I'm getting better at it. So, so for today's, you know, today's time, you know, if I'm a young, you know, young person playing lacrosse, I'm a high school player, my season's canceled, I'm at home. You know, when my parents are talking to me, I'm, I'm focused on what they're saying. You know, I'm in the moment. You know, I'm gonna listen. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna process what they're saying. You know, when I'm taking my online classes in high school, I'm there, I'm present. You know, again, I'm paying attention. 
um, you know, I'm, I'm absorbing the content, I'm maximizing, you know, that, you know, that hour or so of class. And, you know, when we, when we look at now lacrosse, um, you know, physical development, lacrosse development, you know, uh, uh, again, don't confuse activity with productivity. So if I get a goal in my backyard, I'm not going out there and, and ripping low to high from five yards away. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to practice with some intention. You know, what, what are the shots that I take in a game? It's that simple. You know, I'm going to work on those. And, you know, the wall, you know, just working on this, the important specific skills that are going to make me, uh, you know, a better, uh, a better player. So, you know, this is a time right now, I think there's a lot of young people. It's, it's uh, um, you know, there's a lot of unstructure. And there's a lot of unknown. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of, you know, in terms of where this is going to go, you know, we don't know, but you know, what you're doing right now is you're preparing yourself for, you know, when we come out of this and we don't know when that's going to be, you know, whether it's summer, fall, next year, none of us know the answer to that, but we, what, I, what we do know is we can control what we can control, you know, and I'm going to be the best that I can be, you know, each day. So, you know, really what happens in the light comes, you know, what happens in it, you know, really what happens in the dark comes in the light at some point. So I'm going to be a product of how I'm preparing and, you know, myself for when I do get that opportunity, you know, to go play in front of, of college coaches. And the advice I would, um, you know, share with, with parents, and this is a observation of mine over, you know, the last 20 years. This is, this is a generalization. This is not something that's true for every single family and young person, but you know, an observation over my last, you know, 20 years is I've seen a young number of young people that, um, you know, through the recruiting process and through I've gotten to know is you, you see it where, you know, their parents haven't allowed them to fail a ton, haven't allowed them to make, you know, a lot of mistakes and really learn, you know, on their own. Um, and this is all, you know, I'm a, I'm a parent. I want what's best for my children. This is all done with great intention because we all want what is best, you know, for our children. Um, you know, actually talking to a guidance counselor who really coined this phrase, uh, you know, Zamboni parenting. You know, my young, you know, my, my son has some flaws and some rough edges. So as a parent, I'm going to go in there and smooth those over. So when we present him to the college coach, you know, he's, uh, he's either a finished product or, you know, he looks, he looks, he looks tight. So, you know, but we're in a time right now where, you know, there's, there's no structure, you know, you're, we're quarantined, we're at home. Um, we have a ton, we have a ton of time. You know, my, you know, my advice to parents is, you know, allow your son now to come up with how is he going to structure his day? How is he going to take ownership of his life right now? It's not going to be perfect. He's going to make mistakes, right? We know that, but on the foundation of the values that you've instilled in your son, trust, that sure, it's probably not going to be as smooth as if a parent's there holding his hand. Um, and he may make some mistakes, you know, in the long run, but this is a great time right now where we're home and we have plenty of time to allow that young man to really take ownership uh, of his life, you know, personal health, academics, uh, lacrosse, um, and see where that goes from there. And that, you know, it may be, it may be some mistakes, some setbacks, you know, in the short run, um, but it's going to be beneficial in the long run. And it may be not as productive right now, but, you know, when uh, you force people to be uncomfortable and struggle a little bit, you know, I refer to that as productive uh, discomfort. So as a parent and as a coach, you know, I'm not looking in the short game here. I'm in, I'm in it for the long game. And I think this is a great time for all of us, uh, and parents in particular, um, you know, to look at it, look at the long game here, obviously your health and safety, number one day to day, uh, but the, the long-term growth and development uh, of my son, an opportunity for him to take ownership, you know, of his life. And that's, you know, I think, um, you know, the word love gets thrown around a lot in sports today um, and, you know, a number of different meetings, obviously the, you know, love, the affection we have for our children and my wife, but, you know, I look at you know, my, our players is, you know, I love my players. And what that means is it's the motivation to act in their best interest. That doesn't mean holding their hand or show, you know, doing something for them. Okay? Their best interest is forcing them to struggle, to take ownership. So they do grow, they do develop. And I just think that this is an incredible time for, for us as leaders uh, and as parents to give 
young people that opportunity. Coaches, thank you very much. Great, um, great leadership, great genuine messaging, you know, fundamentals. You know, the emotional element um, is always there. We know that. Um, the, the motivation to act. So thanks for that, Coach Wojcik. Thanks for, thanks for bringing us all back into focus with a Coach Wooden quote. That was awesome. Um, you know, and no major message here from me other than vigilance and humility, but, you know, the balance between structure and fun with, with student athletes who are doing their online learning and, and, and training, um, you know, certainly be structured and use the opportunity to develop your ability to, to organize yourself and to understand what time management is, but at the same time, there's a lot of positives to free play. Um, so be creative. Um, and Coach Wojcik stressed the why. It's a great thing. Um, we all know that as coaches that, you know, you can tell a student athlete to do something a thousand times, but if you show them how and tell them why, you're probably going to have a lot more success as a coach. Um, and then the selfless, you know, the selflessness element comes in especially in these times where, you know, vigilance is required and, and being great teammates and being thoughtful and being sensitive and being empathetic. Um, and then obviously the, the fundamental of, of all of us being compassionate and understanding what healthy is, um, healthy relationships, physical health, um, and being healthy with one another in our relationships with each other and, and building those relationships. So, um, gentlemen, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Um, and we will, uh, I'm sure, revisit some of these topics, but your, um, your roles in all this is very much respected and um, the support that you're given to student athletes and families is, is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much and we'll speak soon. Thank you, MV. Thanks guys. Thank you, MV. Thanks, coaches. Thanks, coaches.